it's interesting with music that you have something that is so ethereal and, and so abstract, and yet, in a way of all the art forms, I think it's, it's been the most, particularly recently, driven by technological changes, just because of instrument design over the last yeah. 400 or 500 years. Yes, and, and of course the, the circle is completed because as soon as a new instrument is made, people start composing new music for it. People start thinking of musical possibilities that weren't yeah. thinkable before. So, you know, when, when the, third pe the Steinway with the third pedal came out in the, I don't know, early part of the 20th century, suddenly composers started writing Debussy and mm. so on, started writing music that you couldn't have played before. And, um, I mean, we notice this every day, actually, I should say now, with, with software-based yeah. instruments, that we have a revolution equivalent to the grand piano about every day. It's true. Yeah. It's honestly true. I mean, I'm not exaggerating. Yeah. There, there are amazingly interesting new instruments being made, so many of them that nobody learns to ever to play them. So your first electronic instrument was the VCS-3, is yeah. that right? And do you remember what it was like experiencing it for the first time? How, how, was it an immediate sense of, oh, everything has changed, this is a completely new landscape, or did it take a while for you to realize the possibilities of it? Well, I had, I had a little bit of form beforehand because I had made a very simple synthesizer for myself out of two signals generators. Hmm. You know what those are? They're just yeah. test devices for testing equipment. But you go... <laughs> so, so I used to use that. And so I, I, wasn't, I wasn't a keyboard player anyway, but I wasn't particularly looking for a keyboard instrument. I wanted to be able to do more of that. But the thing about the, VC, the VCS that was really interesting was that you could take another electric instrument and plug it in and then start to do things with that sound. That was really the thing that hooked me. Actually being able to take another instrument and do with it the kinds of things that you could only do in recording studios, but do it live with the instrument. So that, that was what thrilled me, that you could take a... And also, I loved the idea of an instrument that was played by two people. You know, right. somebody playing electric guitar, then it comes into my thing and I'm doing something with the electric guitar. So on stage, we could start to get a sound that really nobody had ever heard done on stage before. Was there a comparable technological change that helped trigger the ambient idea? Well, yes, I think the the important thing there was to do with the possibilities of tape recorders. Right. Um, which actually was the basis of a lot of the things I did. That was why I was so interested in the recording studio, because as soon as music's on tape, it, it's not ephemeral anymore. It's suddenly plastic, you know, it's malleable. You can start to, to do things with it. Um, now, that sounds so obvious now, but it wasn't right. very obvious to most people in the 70s even, when people would say, when you told them how you're making records, they'd say, that's cheating, isn't it? <laughs> Anyone could do that. Yeah. And then <laughs> it, it was... becomes sampling, right? And then it becomes <laughs> yes. the central part of the vocabulary. Cheating is actually all I ever do. <laughs> <laughs>